Hello everyone, this is the Hesley A Square Reading Comprehension Review. If you found this video helpful or any other videos under this playlist helpful, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to share this video with a student who you know may be taking the HESI, the Kaplan, or even the T's exams. So let's get started. On the HESI, you can expect to get 55 multiple choice questions and 60 minutes to answer those questions. You will be asked to identify the main idea, find supporting details, the words of meaning and context, find the writer's purpose and tone, distinguish between a fact and a real opinion, making logical inferences, which are like conclusions, and summarizing passages. If you're taking your HESI pre-nursing exam, you may want to download this checklist. It contains all subjects we discuss on this channel. You can check off certain subjects and concepts that you felt that you've mastered and certain ones that you need to work on. I recommend having at least one month before your testing day to study. 100 hours a month, three hours a day, or 21 hours a week. To purchase this checklist, check the description box below. Identifying the main idea. On the HESI, you will be asked to identify the main idea of passages. Some questions you want to keep in mind as you're doing this. What is this story about? What is the author's point? Is the main idea mentioned in more than one paragraph? So main ideas can be easily found in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end of paragraphs or passages, okay? Check the introduction and the conclusion. And I mention that because you almost have to think like a writer. When you're taught to construct essays in school, you're taught to keep that main idea throughout the whole entire passage in your introduction and in your conclusion, as well as in the three, three or more paragraphs that you construct. You keep those main ideas in the beginning and in the end of paragraphs and in the beginning and the end of the passage. So think like a writer in the sense to find the main ideas. You also want to look for details in the passages. Visualize when reading, okay? Keep the thoughts and keep the images in your head as the author is uh, writing this or as you're reading it. So also, want to read one paragraph and then summarize. So on the head seat, you don't get like, I would say more than five paragraphs. The, the stories are really short, you guys. They're not like other tests. I think the T's and the... Uh, was it the T's and the Kaplan? Their story is a little bit, maybe a little bit linky. I don't know. I can't remember. But um, it's important to just read one paragraph at a time. Summarize that real quickly. I know it's a time test. Summarize that and then stop and then go ahead and read another paragraph. All right. And also what is probably helpful is to read the questions first and then go and read the stories. And that way you know exactly what you're looking for. I feel like that saves time. Identifying supporting ideas. You want to look for visuals, examples, and statistics. For an example, the author might paint a picture about a red dress. It's red, maroon red, with pink roses embroidered or something like that. Examples could be like giving you or explaining information a little bit further so that you could the reader can understand. And statistics are like any type of numbers you see in the passages, like... There was 20,000 cars outside. There was 20 people at the party. Those are statistics. You want to look for details to support the main idea. The main idea to me is like the main character in a movie. And essentially reading these passages is like a movie that you create in your head. Think about it like that. So if the main idea is the main character of a movie, then the supporting ideas would be the supporting actors or actresses in the movie so anything that is going to support that main character of that main idea is going to be your supporting ideas you also want to look for transitional words here's a list of 100 transitional words that you may run across when you're reading your passages identifying the writer's purpose and tone two questions you want to keep in mind who is the intended audience and why is this being written you also want to look at the writer's choice of words and the author's tone. It's almost like reading a text message from a center and they're angry and you know they're angry because the choice of words they're using, maybe their words are all in cap, maybe they're using exclamation marks and emojis, but you get the point. There's no emojis on the, on the test, just to let you know that. But we know they're angry because their tone, okay? So when you're reading these passages, and you're asked to identify the writer's tone, 
know the choice of words like pay attention to the choice of words and what they're trying to convey how they're trying to make you feel and far as like identifying the purpose ask yourself those two questions who is this writer talking to what group of people and why why is this author even writing this passage the meaning of words in context you will be asked on the hussy to find the meaning of words in context this does not mean that you actually have to know definitions or memorize a bunch of definitions no it doesn't mean that i want you to keep in mind that the english language is broad and that one word can have multiple meanings. So finding the words in context, the author will give you clues on how to do that. You will see definitions. So these would be in parentheses or it would just be stated in the paragraph. You will see synonyms of the word, antonyms of the word. And the word is not unknown. I know it says unknown, but it would be bold and I believe underlined as well to help you see the word. I think it is. I'm not, don't quote me on that, y'all. But um, you will get examples as well. Examples to help you understand what the word is clearly. You will get explanations of the word. Word structure. Look at the prefixes and suffixes and root words. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a sec. Surrounding words. This is important, you guys. The surrounding words give you more clues than anything. Surrounding words will tell you exactly how this word is used. Pay attention to the words that becomes that comes before the unknown word and comes after. Word structure. I wanted to briefly talk about word structure because it also can help you find the words of meaning in context. Words are made up of a prefix, a root, and a suffix. For example, we have anti-inflammation. Anti means against. We have arthritis. Arthro means joint and the itis suffix means inflammation. Antebellum. Anti means before and bellum means war. Remember, the re part means again and back. So sometimes in some cases, knowing the word structure can help you identify the meaning of words in context. Types of passages. On the HESI, you will be asked to identify which type of passage you're reading. Narrative writing. Narrative writing tells a story. This can be like a novel, a short play, or even a book. Expository writing. Expository writing informs people. This can come in the form of a newspaper or a magazine article. Technical writing. Technical writing explains information. This can be like a product manual or directions. Persuasive writing. Persuasive writing convinces the reader. This can come in the form of an opinion column or in a blog or an argumentative paper. Here's an example. Pause the video here and in three seconds, the answer will be revealed. Facts versus opinions. On the HESI, you will be asked to identify what is a fact or opinion of a sentence in a paragraph. Facts. Facts can be proven. They do not change and they are objective. An example. Michael Jackson was born on August 29, 1958. Opinions. Opinions cannot be proven. They can change. They are subjective. An example. Michael Jackson is the best artist of all time. Go ahead and pause the video here and in three seconds, all of the answers will be revealed. On the exam, you will be asked repeatedly the questions in the blue box. I will be familiar with them. Be familiar with how to find the answers, regardless of what practice method you take. Be familiar with the questions in the blue box. Now we have our first practice passage, the vet visit. Go ahead and pause the video here. And in three seconds, the answers will be revealed. Next passage, the sticky, smelly human body. Pause the video here, and in three seconds, the answers will be revealed. Next, we have passage number one. Pause the video here, and in three seconds, the answers will be revealed. Lastly, 
we have passage number two. Pause the video here, and in three seconds, the answers will be revealed. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. That is pretty much it. If you liked this video and found it helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with a classmate who you know may be taking a pre-nursing exam soon. If you're interested in the HESI checklist or even the Kaplan pre-nursing study guide, be sure to check the description box down below. And you all have a good day and good luck.